upon this trout. Yay! Upon this rock, an analysis of the metaphysical, supernatural, spiritual issues affecting us and the human condition today. This program's for you. The testimony, a few messages of hope and joy, a little good news to make your life and world show more life. I'm Dr. James Wesley Smith. Our guests today include just plain folks to help you light your way. We'll have details in a moment about today's program. Well, so some folks say prayer is a sacred, a private thing. Among the questions asked often, why should we go to church and pray when every man is a god? You can talk to God without going to church. The answer is simple. Why do you go to a store for groceries or a gas station for fuel? Why see the doctor to keep from getting sick? And once you are, why go to get well? Why do you take medicine? There are many things you can make and do yourself, right? But since we Christians believe Jesus is present in the host or Holy Eucharist, at the Mass, in the Mass, and after Mass, this presence is placed in an enclosure called the Tabernacle. Why not go when He, God, is within a few feet of you, physically? Makes Him listen harder. Of course, it depends on what you believe. The Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus says, Jesus have done great things. In our testimony this segment, one reader writes, um, So in this type of celebration of which you speak, anybody is welcome with you. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Is this something that the boss, whoever that might have been, or the person that made up this mass, um, structured it that way? Or is this something that the individual minister or priest has uh, decided to take it upon? himself or herself to do. No, I'm sure it's the structure of the church. That it's open to all and any who would like to come into church. Uh, aren't you folks afraid there's some crazies coming in the church disrupting things? <laughs> they <or>? have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've already had some of that, but yeah. you continue the service. But you continue the service. Yeah, but with the spirit there it usually leads them
that's something like what we do to our Lord when we come to church each and every day, or in Sunday, in the case may be. Um, in order to get something out of the Eucharist, and you folks all know that you are part of the Eucharist, one minister about two years ago in the choir said, you have to bring something with you. Here is some soul food for thought. Hundreds of millions of souls attend daily a free banquet, one of the longest ongoing celebrations in the history of mankind. This feast takes place simultaneously each and every minute throughout the four corners of the world. Invited participants span the human spectrum. African, Jew, Russian, Thai, the British and the Chinese are all among those included. Still, of the many called, few choose to attend this meal of joy, love, and thanksgiving. We do not speak merely symbolically here. Under the appearance of bread and wine, we are united to the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Impossible, some say? Cannibalism? Before you laugh, consider that in our real world, there is no such thing as a solid. <laughs> Peter, upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, we're here with Pamela Perry, who's a liturgist. That's one of the people who planned the celebration uh, on one of the holy days or holidays in the week, which is generally Sunday in some of the denominations in the Christian church. Pamela. There's something called the Mass. Can you um, share with us uh, what is it? Mass, as you just spoke of, is just a celebration of praising the Lord in song and word, the word, the good word, and uh, dance sometimes within our church. You know, that's interesting because some places in Africa, I understand, dance is a part of the celebration and it really brings the people out and really gets the people into the spirit uh, of that uh, particular event or situation. Uh, can you tell us something about the Mass? What is it? How do you guys go about uh, determining? Determining what? The celebration? The celebration. How do you plan the celebration? Well, it, the Mass is already a structured Mass. 
How? In what way? And for the Catholics, you know, it is very structured. In what way? Well, we have the uh, introductory rite. We have uh, the penance service, the communion service, all within this mm -hmm. the structure of the mass. What What is the penance service? What is the penance service? The penance service is that we just bring to mind our sins. It's like a rebaptizing of ourselves, you know, asking for forgiveness and to uh, re, uh, reunite ourselves with God mm -hmm. and our brothers and sisters. And the communion service, what, what is that? The communion service is bringing the body and blood of Christ upon the altar and sharing it in unity with one another in the community. It's a form or symbol within the Catholic Church. Okay, I gotta ask you this. And I know some people think it's kind of strange. You mean you actually bring some corpse up on the altar and everybody stands around? No, we don't. It's symbolic. It's the, something called a host. Mm -hmm. And the wine, which is in a chalice, which they have a particular ceremony for words that they say over it, which in the Catholic religion, they say it comes becomes the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And the body being the bread, and the blood being the blood that he shed for us on Calvary. Okay, Calvary meaning the place that he... The place where he was crucified. He was he crucified, died. okay. That was 2,000 years ago, if I remember history correctly. Um, what else are you folks doing in this Mass? What is this introductory rite? Um, everybody stands up and introduces themselves, or...? Correct. That is so. Introductory rite is... Um, you could just introduce yourself to the brother or sister next to you or behind you, mm -hmm. surrounding you, and just welcome them to the church. Is this something that you folks at your particular church is, uh, has planned or structured? or? No, no, it's always been structured that way. Who, who structured it that way? Well, the Catholic religion. Okay, the Catholic religion uh, last year, five years ago, ten years ago? No, I'm sure it's centuries ago. Centuries ago, okay. Uh, what do, I, I'm really curious about this communion thing. Um, what is it? You folks eat bread, drink grape juice, or something, or, or what? Uh, you sit around a table and have a feast, or how is that done? No, we have something that well, this used to be a communion rail, which we we're trying to eliminate. But mm -hmm. the people are in line and they come up to the altar and take, partake of this bread and wine, and it is wine, mm -hmm. it is not grape juice or apple okay. juice as such. Okay. Um, how long do these masses usually take? Well, ours at St. Bridget's. That's in Los Angeles? In Los Angeles, okay. usually lasts about an hour and a half. Okay. But it could last up to 35 to 45 minutes. How do you folks get someone to stay in church for an hour and a half? It's the spirit that keeps them in for an hour and a half at St. Bridget's. We have a wonderful choir which helps to uh, develop that wonderful spirit in there and the communion of the people together. We have a wonderful, wonderful congregation and we all seem to help and support one another. Ah, so you don't just go to Mass. This is, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't just go to Mass to just sit and watch or go to the celebration to just sit and watch and take it all in, what I'm hearing you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that people participate in some kind of way? Yes, we do. How? Well, in mostly all parts of the Mass we participate because you will always have, uh, we have songs, and then there's prayers which we pray together, and then there's uh, something that we call the sign of peace. Mm -hmm. Ah, so you don't just go to Mass, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't just go to Mass to just sit and watch or go to the celebration to just sit and watch and take it all in. What I'm hearing you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that people participate in some kind of way? Yes, we do. How? Well, in mostly all parts of the Mass we participate because you always have, uh, we have songs, and then there's prayers which we pray together. And then there's uh, something that we call the sign of peace. Mm -hmm. 
where we individually go around the church and hug, kiss, or shake hands with our brothers and sisters and welcome them and knowing that we're doing what Christ asks us to do to love our brothers. Hmm. A sign of peace. I've been to churches and is that where everybody says something like, my peace I give unto you or Christ's peace I give unto you? You know, that's amazing that that would happen at your church. I've been to churches where you turn next to the person and you attempt to give them this so-called sign of peace and they frown at you or they wince or they move away. You mean your church doesn't have anything like that? Uh, no, we have a great sign of peace at our church, in fact. We have the, the congregation gets up and move around all over the church. Mm-hmm. And there's a, a song being sung at that time, which even makes the spirit more alive and everyone's happy and, and shaking hands and smiling and greeting one another. Sounds like your church is a family. Uh, everybody goes there and knows each other or can anybody just go in and participate in this mass? Well, anyone is welcome. Any and all are welcome. But no, I can't say that everyone knows one another. We have about 800 people usually at the 1030 service. And uh, no, I can't say that we all know one another. But predominantly we have a, a great, um, what should I call uh, We have lots of organizations within the church. Mm-hmm. And within those organizations, we have a lot of the people that come to our services that join these organizations. So we can call those families. And each of those individuals know someone within that group or another group or another organization within the church. So it's which like calls, ex- which is called an extended family. It's like extended. That's what it was supposed to say. And I'm sure brothers and sisters in Africa can relate to that. Then the mass or this celebration <coughs> is composed of prayer, song, a joining together, uh, giving the sign of peace. And the feast is what you're saying. The feast, and most importantly, the word. We mustn't forget that the word is being uh, read and preached or taught. What to word the is this? The gospel. What gospel is this? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Something about Jesus Christ is being taught to. Yeah, from the Bible. That's the Christian religious book. Yes. You see. Why would people come to a celebration to hear something from the Bible or something about Christ? It might be their need. I can't say why all of them for me. Mm-hmm. I go for my need and I need to hear the word of the Lord. It keeps keeps my life balanced. Does one have to be Christian or Catholic, I think it's called, just to come to this Absolutely. celebration? No. All are welcome. They don't charge you anything at the door? or No, I don't think any church charges you at the door. Oh, I've been to some places in the South that uh, they used to have black people in a certain section of the church and they used to be charged and charged, so, to, enter a church? charged to enter the church or sit down. That's why a lot of folks uh, throughout the world still don't go to church because they were treated so well.
The Mass is really a prayer and worship service. It means a great body of people, much like the spirit of the African community. Our set form of conducting our ceremony, called Rite, R-I-T-E, and our group of Rite, used for public worship, called Liturgy, hold much symbolic meaning to we of African descent. We know what sacrifice is. Hence, blacks tend to be more fully understanding of the concept of what we call the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Central to this worship is the Holy Eucharist, which means communion. In another, communion in other Christian churches is a memorial to the Last Supper. We have the real thing. As Jesus said, do this in memory of me. So does the priest in changing the wine and bread into the body and blood of Christ. Sounds strange, doesn't it? But seek and ye shall find. The Mass lasts from 15 minutes to an hour and a half to two hours. On the average, it is 30 to 45 minutes, depending on where the service liturgy is held. The continual standing and kneeling signifies what we consider important or are holy parts in the service. The Latin which was once heard in the church was the then practical innovation of the African Pope, St. Victor I. Latin then was as much used as English is today or Swahili or Bantu, or Hausa. Those funny-looking clothes, vestments they're called, the priest wears at Mass, are what Jesus and his apostles, later bishops, wore every day. To keep the Sabbath, the church only insists you go once a week. It is sometimes required to hear Mass on special or holy days of obligation. Some of these you already know as holidays, such as Christmas or Easter. To meet your daily schedule, you may go at any time Mass is sung from 5.30 a.m. Sunday mornings to throughout the day in many cities. And if you prefer ancient tradition, even early Saturday evenings worldwide. For those wishing more Holy Spirit in their services or Mass, we literally have it. Always have, since the original Pentecost with the Apostles. It's called charismatic renewal. Look into our Pentecostal movement. Our service does not depend on a preacher's personality. We don't lock you into three hours. You don't have to show yourself before the congregation. We don't throw church fashion shows. You don't have to dress to be seen. Rags are beautiful. Just come. And if you don't have anything to give, don't. We don't want you to get into God per se. You commune with him. Let God get into you. Or let go and let God, as the saying goes. We want you. We need you. You can belong. This Christian church, Catholic, universal on earth, with the kingdom of God afterward, is one big family. Good God, I got to tell you, you should be one of communion of souls, uniting with Christ and sharing actively in his physical death and resurrection was initiated by Jesus himself. As he pointed out, he came to fulfill the law. Mo uh, in order to get something out of the Eucharist and you folks all know that you are part of the Eucharist. One minister about two years ago in the choir said, you have to bring Now, I gave approximately 30 minutes of silence, and it's something like Jesus does with us. We sit in church, whether staring or praying from the tabernacle over there, we love our Savior Jesus Christ, and we pose. And we don't say anything, and we wait for Him to speak to us without realizing that we are. Most of Christian dogma can be summed up in the following, which is called the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light. 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. upon this rock for this segment. Remember, in anything you do, or with any message you receive, first discern the Spirit. How? First pray always, it's effective and it's free. Love God. In the end, only you will be weighed in the balance. Only you can answer the questions we hope we've raised here. We'll see you next time, and let the rock upon which he builds be you. God bless. For music, program, or transcript information, write us. Please send a self-addressed stamp envelope to RP Communications Corporation, Box 1862, Hollywood, 90028. That's Box 1862, Hollywood, California, USA, 90028. Presentation of Upon This Rock is made possible by this and other stations. A Two Roses production in conjunction with Archangel Company. This is James Wesley Smith.